Hello, let me start by apologizing for not presenting this in person. My name is Victor, and today I am presenting a review of current approaches in generating geometric digital twins for existing buildings from point cloud datasets. And to begin with, let's first define what we actually mean by geometric digital twin. We adopt the SACS definition of a digital twin, and we mean by that a digital replica of a physical building. And the main part of this is it has to represent the properties uh, of the building itself. And by geometric digital twin, we mean a set of objects together with their geometry, as well as relations between these objects. So why do we care about that? Digital Twins has proven their value for building managers and owners on the operational stage of building lifecycle. Usually, as design bin model serves as a basis for a digital twin after the end of the construction. But the problem is that the majority of buildings has been built prior to the wider adoption of beam technology for construction and have only paper-based drawings that are usually unreliable or outdated. This limits the adoption of digital twins for existing buildings. Moreover, most of these buildings will remain in use in the following decades. Therefore, digitizing geometry of existing buildings relies on point cloud datasets that are collected with static or mobile laser scanners or videogrammetry as a reference for modeling. However, the process of modeling geometry from point clouds remains an expensive, laborious, and time-consuming process. Therefore, we argue that we need to develop cheap and labor unintensive methods for digitizing geometry of existing buildings. Before jumping deeper into point cloud processing and analyzing state of practice and state of research, we tried to identify what buildings usually consist of. We gathered a number of IFC files of different buildings on different stages of their life cycle. This included as designed and as is IFC models of residential buildings, offices, hospitals, commercial buildings, and others. You can see the top 10 frequent objects on the right part of the slide. It's worth mentioning that the goal of this analysis wasn't to precisely estimate fractions for different object types, but rather to identify what objects are more frequent than the others to prioritize the automation of their digitization. Most of the listed objects tend to have a simple geometry or a combination of primitive geometrical features such as planar or cylindrical surfaces, but some of the object types have complex geometry. Let's first take a look on the commercial software that is designed to simplify the process of transforming point clouds into digital models. Most of the large software vendors in AAC domain and a number of smaller companies provide automatic or semi-automatic tools for modeling objects from point clouds. The example of these tools include identifying primitive geometry, fitting parametric models or models from a catalog into a point cluster of individual object, template matching, and semi-automatic pipe run models. Th these tools notably reduce manual effort necessary for modeling and the output of these tools serves as a basis for further manual processing. This includes the correction of the dim dimensions of geometric generated objects, modeling objects that are missing, and removing incorrectly detected objects. Researchers are trying to make the step forward and develop an automatic end-to-end -end method or framework for digitizing some of the object types. Generally, we can split the methods into bottom-up top-down, and hybrid approaches. The first group of methods relies on the detection of low-level or low-scale features, composing them together to detect objects. The examples of low-level features include local curvature or normal orientation in a particular point. Top-down methods, in contrast, detect high-level features and then decompose them into different objects. The example of these methods include floor detection and room detection methods, as they are large-scale features of a point cloud. 
Object detection methods for low-scale feature detection are usually based on RANZAC, hue transform, region growing methods, or their variations. The first to mention methods detect a plane or a cylinder that has the largest number of inliers among the provided points. This allows detecting wall and slab surfaces as large vertical and horizontal planar patches, and pipes as cylindrical uh, surfaces. These methods are rather robust in the presence of noise, but tend to be less effective in the presence of clutter or occlusions. The application of these methods on large point clouds remains computationally inefficient. The region growing method exploits the fact that many shapes in buildings have homogeneous curvature on one or many directions. This property holds for planar, spherical and cylindrical surfaces. This method allows uniting points on homogeneous surfaces together and partitioning them into multiple surfaces that are then merged and classified using either the rule-based method or machine learning method. Unlike Ranzak and Hue Transform, region growing method is less sensitive to clutter or occlusion, but more sensitive to noise. The above mentioned methods are suitable to detect objects with simple geometry only. Objects with less regular geometry, such as plumbing terminals or machinery, require other detection approaches. If the approximate location of an object is known, we can do a fine registration of a model of the object to the point cloud using ICP or one of its variations. If the location is unknown, we can try to place a model into every possible location of the point cloud and check if it fits there. Since the number of potential locations is large, this method is not very efficient on large scales. The reduction of the search space allows to do a search in reasonable time. For example, Edgewise allows to restrict the search of a template to a selected wall and make the search in a reasonable time. Alternatively, researchers propose slicing the point cloud and do template matching in 2D, which is computationally much more feasible. This, however, imposes extra constraints on the location and orientation of the object. Top-down approaches for digitization of building geometry are based on space decomposition. Space detection methods are usually project the input point cloud onto an XY plane or into individual axis or take a particular slice of data. The methods assume that points on wall surfaces will result into high density on the projection of the XY plane, while points on floors and ceilings will result into high density areas on the z-axis. On the next step, these methods locate lines on 1D or 2D projections using similar methods as discussed above, for example, RANZAC. These lines become wall or slab candidates. In the case of the projection on the z-axis, it directly gives the heights of floors and ceilings in the building. In other cases, Space layout is formulated as an optimization problem based on the space partition candidates identified on the previous step. This optimization problem is then solved using, for example, integer programming or shape grammar approaches. The resulted layout provides space decomposition of the building. On top of that, it allows to split the input into multiple smaller point clouds of individual spaces and process them independently, which is computationally more efficient. The methods discussed above are deterministic, rule-based algorithms that use explicit knowledge about environmental constraints. While flatness and verticality of walls holds for the majority of buildings, some of other assumptions may not hold. For example, many space detection methods assume the input to represent the Manhattan world which is not always the case. In contrast to that, data-driven or deep learning approaches for object and space detection methods do not explicitly use such information. They implicitly capture it 
from labeled data that is provided beforehand. Practically speaking, researchers and engineers use deep learning methods to do semantic or instance segmentation of the point cloud, bounding box regression, or floor plan reconstruction. This either replaces a part of an algorithm, for example, if we want to find walls in the point cloud, or almost entire algorithm. For example, uh, if we use instance segmentation, we directly receive labeled point clusters of individual objects. The main drawback of this approach is that it requires massive labeled data sets to generalize, which is not always feasible. And the quality of the best instance segmentation neural networks on indoor point clouds is still quite bad for practical applications, especially when we talk about smaller objects. Lastly, I want to briefly talk about relation detection part. Some of the relations are a result of the object detection or space detection algorithms. For example, when you formulate your problem optimization problem for space detection uh, where a wall separates two spaces, you will receive this relation that the wall is a boundary of one room and another room and these rooms are adjacent naturally. However, it doesn't produce application specific relations. Recently, scene graph understanding got a lot of attention from the computer science world. There, they basically try to represent an indoor environment as a graph of objects and spaces, and then learn the relations between them. They use recent advancements in graph neural networks to establish these relations. At the end of my presentation, let me talk about the downsides of the geometry digitization methods that I believe limit their application by the industry. The first problem that I think is important is the lack of public benchmarks and user requirements to evaluate methods and to compare them between each other. Unlike computer vision domain, where researchers publish target metrics and public datasets that allows readers to compare methods, Civil engineering papers tend to publish metrics on their own data. This makes it harder to compare methods between each other and to understand to what extent the methods solves the problem. The second aspect is that most of the methods use explicit knowledge and the explicit environmental constraints. This limits their extendability and flexibility. And I believe that data-driven methods is the answer here. The amount of available data and computational resources is growing rapidly, and it makes the adoption of these methods more feasible. This concludes my presentation. Many thanks for your attention.